Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here, and today we'll be checking out Death Inc. This is a unique real-time strategy game where you play as the Grim Reaper, attempting to spread the plague throughout Europe. I know it sounds evil, it certainly is. Uh, this game is being developed by Ambient Studios, they're an independent developer that consists of members who worked on games like Little Big Planet, Need for Speed, and Fable. And here in this video, I'll be showing you a bit of gameplay as well as giving you my general thoughts and impressions on the game. Now, I do need to start off by saying this is in the very early alpha. The alpha actually just began today. Uh, so the game is far from complete, but I think this will give you a general idea of what to think is all about. So we'll be hopping into a night version of the map. There's essentially just one level available right now. And let's just go ahead and get right into things. And now once again, the goal is I am playing as the Grim Reaper, Reaper trying to sp spread the plague. I'm having a hard time talking today. Uh, now, like other RTS games, you've got specific units that have certain strengths and weaknesses. We're actually starting off here with a couple of peasants. Uh, peasants, while generally weak, are really strong in numbers versus soldiers and archers. So what I'm going to try to do here is build up my peasant count early on so that I can engage and fight some soldiers and archers. So I'll go ahead and grab these guys up. And the thing that they're doing here with this game is they're really trying to simplify the formula of what you see, what you expect an RTS to be. You know, RTS is a lot of times people are thinking a lot of micromanagement, but this game, quite simplistic. You actually can't click on individual units. What you do is you click and drag this path, which your units, your your horde, will follow. And you can do it to individual units, so you can spread. It's not just moving one giant horde. You're actually able to, to spread off your various unit types. But right now, we've just got a couple of peasants, so they're all going to move in one big group like this here. We can have some attack over here, and we can have some attack over here. And at this point, we'll be picking up another unit type, the cow. The cow is an explosive unit. Basically, they are going to explode on impact. Okay, so I can move the camera around like this, and I'm going to send my peasants over here. And I'm also going to send my cows over here. Now, I don't want my cows to engage yet, because we've just got a few of the soldiers. So I'm just going to have my peasants engage with them, since they're going to be good in numbers. And I'm going to have my cows stay back. I want to use them for large groups coming up. So now we'll have my peasants engage with the soldiers, at which point we're going to get another unit type. Uh, we're also collecting souls while we're playing here, and that's uh, sort of like a score system. Okay, so now we've got three unit types. We've got my cows, my peasants, and my soldiers. Now soldiers, they're strong against brutes and peasants. So they're going to be good against that group of upcoming peasants. So let's go ahead and send the soldiers in. And then we can also at the same time send the peasants in in this direction. And once again, I'm just going to try to keep these cows back because I'd like to use them to explode at another point. So you're going to notice a difference in sort of the highlighting around of these units. Uh, when they're sort of like fluffy like clouds, that means they're just idle, doing nothing. When they're spiky, that does mean that they're engaging. And let's go ahead and swivel the camera around. We've got a few more things up here. Uh, the next upcoming enemies, we've got a couple of archers, these guys over here. And it's actually really funny. You can mouse over. And each of these guys, they'll have individual names and, and jobs as to what they do. That guy was a professional a journeyman pup, puppy tickler. <laughs> This guy is a first Royal Cow Regiment. Is he also? He's the fifth Royal Carrot Regiment. Okay. All right. So we've got a, a row of soldiers and a row of archers. I think now is a good time. I'm going to go ahead and use my explosive cows. So we're going to send them in and try to convert as many of those as possible. And then I like to send these guys in behind. Now you'll notice the different colored highlight depending on the unit type that we've got. I want to keep them away from the exploding cows, though, because the exploding cows can actually kill my own units, and that's something you've got to be uh, really careful about there. And then we'll move forward, and we will take out these archers. All right. So now all of that has been taken care of. Let's pull these guys back. Get back here, please. Get back here. And I want the peasants. We've got a brute right there. And we've got those archers that are going to engage. The soldiers are really good against the brute, so we'll move them forward. So while in this game, you could certainly just do this. I could certainly just grab a huge horde and have them all move in one big group and just walk into whoever. But it's not smart to do that. Uh, because if you, if you do work like that, then you're going to have a hard time against specific enemy types. So you really want to try to make sure that... Oh boy. Let's go. Get, get your brute back here a little bit and get everyone to engage like this. So there's a few different things. I can send these individual groups along, but you can also command your entire army with a purple wave. And I'll show you how we do that in just a moment. First, we're just going to go ahead and have these guys fight over here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the ground in a general area that's going to bring out this dark uh, or this sort of bright purplish pinkish hue. Now I can peel off individual units by clicking on them and moving around and then there'll be a, a trail of their color. You'll also notice while I do this it's, it is the Death Reaper moving around and uh, that's supposed to be me. The Grim Reaper, not the Death Reaper. So yeah, I can do these individual color to move specific unit types in a group like this. But what I can also do is if I click away from a unit type and drag through, it will do this trail that will send everybody along that path. And that's how you can move one giant horde just like that. Okay, so we've got some more enemies up over here. Uh, we, it looks like we've got some archers right there, plus some soldiers. Uh, for this, I, I'm, I can pretty much send everyone in. We'll send the archers in the back, but we're gonna send these guys in all together as one big group. And then we will send the archers in to follow. And now will be a good time for me to show you my abilities. So I've got a couple abilities. One of them is a plague of rats, which anytime there's an infected building like this one right here, or crates, I can send out these rats and they're going to go out and attack for me. And that's perfect. And oh, what do we got over here? Someone's kind of just chilling out, doing whatever. Oh, he's bugged, isn't he? What are you doing? Get over here. Are you not going to come with me like I'd like you to? Are you just going to? Come on. Could you please go this way? Thank you. <laughs> alpha. It is the alpha. All right. So we're going to grab these troops again. I can huddle them all together by clicking in between them and sending out this big fog. I'm going to get them all together in one big group, and then we'll drag right through them to send them all in this direction. All right. So coming up here, we've got a row of soldiers and then some archers and a brute. So let's just go ahead and send everyone in at this point. Now's a good time for that. We'll send everyone in over here, and we'll also do our second ability, which is this little dive bomb of ravens which you'll see come down right now and do work <laughs> they're so awesome and we'll be mousing over these little souls here to collect those to add to our score so we're doing pretty good so far uh what do we got up here we got a couple of brutes up front uh, who is bad against brutes we've got some guys who are, are pretty bad against the peasants really aren't that great against brutes so we're going to send in the soldiers here and the other brutes first and then they will engage with those guys. And then we can just send in everyone like this. And we'll have them go around. It's just some peasants up here. So that'll be nice and easy to take out. And look at how strong our horde is right now. We're really doing great. Now, if I were to just blindly send units in at certain occasions, um, I, I have played this in the past like that. And it, it just doesn't really work out well. <laughs> it doesn't work out well at all. Now, the ultimate goal here is for us to kill uh, this guy over here. And I can go ahead and... To show you where he is we have to kill the nobleman that's our ultimate goal and ideally when you play this to rack up a score i believe it's one of those things where the faster you do it the better off you are the higher score you're going to get uh, but obviously since right now i'm just trying to talk you guys through this that uh, isn't exactly how we're handling this at the moment so we're going to move our entire horde now and we've got these guys right up here why don't i go ahead and do a raven call on them as my troops get close and here come the ravens dive bombing into victory. And we want our archers to go back here because they are... Oh, and we automatically got some archers like that. Let's send them over here. I don't want them to... Okay, there we go. There we go. Wonderful. And we collect their souls and we continue to move forward. Now, the next big area we've got over here, i got a few things. Uh, what I can do is I can send in some rats. You see those little, those little infected crates there? If we send in that plague of rats, they are going to attack. And then we can send in our troops like this and just send them along those paths. So quite, quite different from, you know, I guess what we call a standard RTS where you're able to individually click on these units. Um, they, they've really, really tried to simplify this process. It makes me wonder, I'm unfortunately not certain, and I apologize for that, I'm not certain if they plan to come to mobile. It seems like a game that could certainly work very well on the platform, though, uh, because of its simplicity. So... I sort of imagine that that probably will happen, if not initially at some point. But it's be, it's initially being developed for PC, so this is uh, it's gonna, going to be its primary platform. And we're going to have some more explosive cows now, which is really exciting. I really like the explosive cows. All right, guys. There we go. And then we will huddle everyone together once again by clicking down here in the center, getting everyone into one big horde. My crazy, crazy demon horde. 
and we'll send him over here. And I really like the death animation. I just think he's he's really cool looking. <laughs> he's really neat. Okay, so we've got a few things. Look at these big brutes there, some archers and some peasants. Oh boy, that seems like that could be a good time. What else do we have coming up? This seems like this could be a really good place for me to send in my explosive cows. So why don't we do that? Oh, that's, that seems like that's going to be fun. Okay, let's send in some cows here. And I'm not sure if I can peel some off. It doesn't really seem like that. I mean, it doesn't even seem like if I wanted to peel some of these off, I could. Uh, maybe that's a sort of a system that will come into play in the future, but it doesn't seem like that's an option right now. So, all right, so we'll be sending those guys in. And then I'd like to send these guys to follow. <laughs> Watch out, don't explode on me, please, cow. Go over there, you explode over there. Roots, come this way. There we go. And then everyone go like that. There we go, come on, guys, come on. Come on. And then go over here and take those guys out. Oh, it's such a crazy, crazy demon horde. Except we've got some stragglers over here that we'd like to get back in action. Come on, beta. <laughs> Come on, beta stragglers. Oh, you need to go around. You guys were confused, I see. It's okay. You can come over here. And let me go ahead and do a dive bomb over here. And send some rats over here. And then I'd like to send everyone along this path. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And then we got those archers engaging. And this is the biggest horde that I've ever had, so it really... Um, really proves to me that if I take my time and really think about my engagement and think about the people that I'm sending to fight against the various uh, enemy types, it really does make a difference. And how are these guys stuck over here? Are they, can we go through this way, guys? Or are you just, is that not a possibility? Which way can you go? Can I go through this way with you guys? Can we do this? Some of you guys are just really, you're just doing whatever. Are you in the house or what are you doing? Are you inside of the house? Can you get out of the house? Is that a possibility? They're like walking the walls here or something. All right, whatever. Let's grab these guys, bring them right over here. Our next engagement, we've got some soldiers there. And send everyone over. And this is the final boss as we're up against the noblemen coming up here. Unfortunately, we're gonna be missing a few of our archers because they are damn silly so let's just send everyone in now and we will also dive bomb here with our crows send this guy in as well and this is the final final battle here in the alpha the nobleman he is a dead man i am this is the strongest force i've ever moved in to complete this is crazy <laughs> this is really really crazy all right, fantastic. And that is everything. So we're going to click this to collect all of our souls. And I think, yeah, all those guys are going to die too. Racking up our score. And that is an unbelievable score. Wow. Wow, where am I? Where's my rank right here? Rank number nine with a score of 6,000. That's the leaderboard, guys, in all the alpha right now. I am in the top 10, just barely, but I'm there nevertheless. So I think it's one of those things where I, I believe that if you move faster, you're going to get a better score. Um, yeah, there's a there's a time bonus as well. So the quicker you move, the better the, your score is going to be. Clearly, I took my time just to show you guys the game, but that is it. Uh, this is this has been us checking out the Alpha for Death Inc., the unique real time strategy game where you play as the Grim Reaper. And I'd actually like to back up and as we exit here, just show you a bit of the daytime gameplay. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I just think the it's. It's the difference between day and night, and that's it. So yeah, guys, uh, the game is currently in alpha. Now, what they're doing is they attempted to seek funding via Kickstarter. Unfortunately, that failed, or they didn't come. They didn't get enough funding before the end, um, and they ended up, I believe, canceling it a little bit early before it finished. But it is in alpha. You can buy your way in. Uh, there's a few options, essentially, is what you can do. 
They've got this early buy-in option where you can put down some money, which will guarantee you access to the game in alpha, in beta, and then you'll get yourself uh, access once the game is complete as well. Now that's available for as low as $10 and as high as $5,000. And basically the breakdown is like this. They've got uh, different points between 10, 15, 30, 50, 100, 250, 500, 1500, and $5,000. I'm assuming the average person viewing this might spend between 10 to 50 depending on how generous you're feeling and it's not just a generosity thing because you're also going to get different uh benefits depending on your price point like the ten dollar one basically just gets you access to the game and then as you go up from there uh, you get extra benefits like an art book soundtrack you can get named characters in the game you can get a named cow uh the the five thousand dollar one you can get named the king in the game uh, that's a lot of money that's obviously not for the average viewer probably no one watching this but uh, yeah, and there's also things like uh, t-shirts and things of that nature. So if you'd like to buy in, I'm sure most people would probably spend between 10 and $50, and that will get you access to the game for good, and maybe some extra things if you spend a little bit more. I'm likely going to keep up with this and uh, follow it throughout its development because I think it's an interesting concept. It's obviously a new take on the uh, real-time strategy genre, much, much different from any RTS game I've played in the past. And um, I, I think it's interesting, so I think it's worth keeping an eye on. All right, guys, thanks so much for checking out Death Inc. with me. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning. All right, cows, go do your business over here. Come on, explosive cows. You guys ready for this? This is so funny. No, explosive cows, go over here. Explosive cows only, please. You guys stay over here. Okay, you guys go right there. Explosive cows, do work. Yes, I killed my own troops, I think. That was horrible. <laughs> Ugh.